Hello everyone, it's Infinity Gamer here and in this video I'm going to be showing you the new Hlok Station Scenery Expansion Pack from Corvus Belly and comparing it to the Crimson Stone set that you would receive if you bought Crimson Stone. So if you bought Crimson Stone, you'll be familiar with the terrain that came in the set. It's very standard, it's the same very much as what you would have seen in Wildfire, apart from a little bit thinner, the same as Coldstrom, the same as Operation Black Wind, which just came out with the Aleph and the Hack Islam. This is everything here, and you can even see that there's, you might just be able to make out that this is the mat that comes with it, this is all of the terrain, this is 100% what you got in Operation Crimson Stone. Now, Corvus Belli have recently released the expansion set that comes with it. All of the terrain that you see here is part of that set. We have two walkways uh, that come there, two sets of stairs, which you can see just there, two smaller buildings, uh, it, slightly taller than the small building, but the same sort of footprint that we received in Crimson Stone. So two of those. We have the sniper tower that looks really good. We've got a console that comes in this so that you've got something to play in. The big objective room that also comes in this set. Uh, they have doors that kind of remove and also come on little stands. You see here there are two configurations for this objective room. I've gone with the floor and the walkway. The other option is this floor, I believe it sits as like a roof option. Just trying to remember off the top of my head. Yep, it kind of goes as a roof which you can then use uh, I'm not sure why you would go with that configuration because this one to me seems like the obvious one. I do love the idea of a walkway in an objective room. This is a cool idea. It's a little bit disgusting. I can just imagine certain units managing to make it in here first, sitting up here, sitting prone and doing horrible things, but I love it. This is a really, really nice little objective room if that's what you're after. So all of this comes in the expansion pack. There are very handy instructions on how to assemble it. I must admit that while sometimes these buildings can be a little bit fiddly and I'll link up to the video the instruction on how to construct these without doing any damage to them if you haven't got that already. Some of this was a little bit easier. I mean obviously these are just like bigger versions of, of that so my link will help you assembling these. Um, the tower itself was a little bit fiddly just because of the multiple levels. This was absolutely fine. The stairs and the walkways I think it was actually the stairs that gave me the biggest hassle, but mostly not from what I expected. So as part of this video, I'm going to go through a few of the things that I really love about this set, a few things that frustrated me, but also look at combining the two together, how much table coverage would you get from using both of these? Is it enough for you to basically have all of your terrain needs met? So jumping into something that I struggled with with this set, is that for some reason when popping out like the the, t the bits that like the stair tabs here popping those out it was very easy for the uh, colored sides to actually peel off with it so you've got to take a huge amount of care whereas i find with this stuff i don't know what it is but it's really difficult for that same damage to appear whereas a few of these um, i had to be very strategic as to how i aligned them so that you couldn't see the damage that i'd done to them uh, same with like squashing some of the tabs uh, very delicate in terms of like the amount of force and pressure you can use in assembling them. Another bugbear I have with this set, and it's a really small one because it's actually quite easy to undo, is a lot of these, so the ladders, uh, the stairs that go across, uh, those are the two only things. They have these little bars in them, and they're supposed to slot into these vertical aspects here, but how I want to be using these stairs and the ladders is mostly to adjoin to the existing terrain that I have there. In which case, those slots are very useful for keeping them in place and stopping them from sliding around. You know, obviously if you move the main building, they're gonna move. But the alternative is that if you use this little barrier or this filler, which I assume it's there just in case you don't want to link it onto an existing building and you just want to like plonk it anywhere really, um, is that then that's another thing that can move very easily off the terrain itself. I just don't think there's a need for these little barriers because if you're not going to attach it to the side of the building, which I mean why wouldn't you, then you can just rest it on top like as if you have these things. Maybe I'm missing the point of them, 
Um, that's obviously incredibly likely. But for me, not having those tabs, I mean, maybe at the bottom, where you're not necessarily going to be joining those uh, onto anything, potentially. Maybe that's a nice little filler, but again, you don't really notice those little tabs to really have a problem with them. So definitely don't see the need of those on top. And then that becomes especially true with the bridges, because I would typically just be using the bridges to join two buildings together, and I would be pretty happy. Um, and because the other advantage of, of doing it so that like that, it connects to the wall of the building itself is that it takes up the least amount of space. Whereas, so the next logical space is to have it kind of under the apex of the arch so that it then has room to be flat on the building there, which takes up a decent chunk of the actual usable space of the rooftop of the building. So you're much better to just slot it on there um, and then have that adjoin the building that you're, you're kind of targeting, like so. There you go, like it's in place, it's sturdy, which is great if you're using it, and it doesn't take up any more space than is absolutely necessary. So I don't really see the point in those little feet things. The other thing that I struggle with ever so slightly, originally when I was assembling this objective room, it took me ages to figure out that these feet were for these doors. It, it was only when I had them left over and nothing physically left to put them into because they're the same as like the feet that are on the barricades here. So I just assumed that there would be barricades or something for them to go in until I fully assembled everything. Uh, but that's, that sits there uh, on the inside of the building. Now again, it's just, it's kind of odd for me because to me either the door is open or closed. So I just wondered if there was a better system for having the doors like able to be in there and closed. Kind of like some of the terrain that comes out has like a, a brace that goes into the wall and you slot the door and the brace basically keeps it in position. Whereas for this, I just don't, I don't really get why it needs to stand on its own like that. I mean, maybe you can use them as additional terrain pieces and blocking line of sight, but it's also, it's clearly the door to the building. So like the single one with how the foot is, you can't have anything fully behind it because the foot gets in the way. This one's ever so slightly easier, but then you've kind of got to go around the foot to, to kind of see around the edge. So in terms of terrain pieces, I don't really get them. Uh, and in terms of doors, I don't really get them because either they're there and the objective room is closed, like some missions start that it's closed and then you've got to open them, uh, or it's open and you don't need the doors there at all. So yeah, just not entirely sure of the point of those doors really, but otherwise the terrain itself adds a lot more layers to the table than you would have just by using the Crimson Stone set. Now, with these, obviously you can increase the height of the terrain that you have by stacking some of these buildings, but the downside to that is that it then takes away the actual line of sight blocking terrain that you have on the table itself. Whereas, you know, something like this, you can easily plonk that on the table and it creates that height. The good thing being that this is like three layers of height. The only thing that worries me about this Cyber Tower is that it's actually quite imbalanced because the stairs run, so the central column is in the middle, obviously, central column, and then the stairs come up one side and then the other side and then the other two sides have nothing. So one of the things that I will need to test at some stage, and we'll probably do a short of me testing it, is whether putting a model on the top here will cause the the tower to tip, because that would be annoying if a quite a well-painted model is on the top there and then the whole thing tips over or takes a slight nudge. So that's the only concern I have with this. However, adding this, adding the objective room, which whether you're playing an objective mission or not, this is actually a good thing to be adding. And then the buildings that you have, the two extra buildings, adding some walkways to create uh, some kind of you know extra layers of movement around the table, especially when you've got some slightly higher stuff like this blocking line of sight, could be quite cool. The other things that you get in both sets that I want to talk about briefly are the mats that you can see here. One thing that did surprise me was that combining the two mats gave you a really good table size, but they did they weren't designed to actually be joined together. You know, this uh, one for the Hock Station is an incredibly different design to what you have for Crimson Stone, and the two don't match onto each other. I think it would be quite cool if the two actually came together and formed a single mat. Another thing that bugs me about these mats, and it has bugged me since Wildfire, is that when I bought Wildfire, there was a really cool poster on the other side of the O12 units in there. Since Wildfire, I mean, I haven't got Coldstrom, so that's the only set I haven't 
had out of the modern set. But I know for Crimson Stone and for Black Wind, they don't have a poster on the other side, it's just blank. I think that's a huge missed opportunity from Corvus Belli to not have at least a poster of some cool artwork on the other side because not a lot of players use these mats to play with. So instead they just sit to one side not being used at all. Put some cool artwork on the other side like you used to do with Wildfire and yes you've increased your print costs but players can actually have that on their walls and that would be brilliant, that would be fantastic especially for each one of these where the artwork for Crimson Stone and Black Wind has actually been really quite cool. But does this fit a table well enough? Do you have enough here to have all of your terrain needs sorted? Let's put this on the major, the bigger table, the 42 by 42, and let's see. I've tried to set the table up as best I can for maximum coverage, but also a little bit of interest. And we're not quite there in terms of having a table here that I think you could play a proper game on. I think the, the reason for that is twofold. There's too many low-lying structures and I've had to do that to try and get the spread. So a lot of single story. This is a bit of a saving grace in that typically when an objective room is played it's infinite height so that gives some high you know, um, line of sight blocking from across different areas but again then a lot of the buildings actually have line of sight to each other anyway because they had to be slightly set back. When you're down on the ground level there's actually a surprising amount of line of sight blocking thanks to the things I ridiculed in part, the doors to the objective room. So they actually do help with line of sight blocking um, and I needed to use them in this because I was so stretched for scatter terrain that really blocked off line of sight. So even just off the edges of here, just adding that S2 level of coverage, you know, S5, wouldn't be able to see over it, does mean that there's quite a lot of areas where you can't see but there's also a lot of areas where you can. You know, this sniper tower, for example, I mean, it can't see anywhere where the massive objective room is in theory, but it can see pretty much everything else just because it's so much higher than the other terrain that I've been able to build just through lack of it. So what you would need to do is add at least, I think, one other terrain set. So like the Operation Blackwind or Coldstrom to this to make it playable, really. And even then there would be loads of open areas and you know, it might not necessarily be as challenging for some as you would like to see. I did test this sniper tower, however, with a nice metal mini on the top there. Because only really an S2 can fit up this ladder, that's the saving grace for it. Uh, if you've got something that's, I mean, I've tried to put this on the halfway line as much as possible so that infiltrating, you know, you could get an S2 back here, but anything bigger than an S2 you couldn't. But it would still be a little bit annoying to have an S2 sniper pop up on something this tall when everything else is so low. So I think you need to at least come add one other terrain set so that you can have some of these smaller buildings in some of the bigger ones, add that to it, and then that gives you the layers and, and a little bit more line of sight blocking than what I can achieve with just the Crimson Zone set and the scenery expansion set. However, I do love the addition of the, lad, uh, the, the bridges. They're really good. They do make it a lot easier for you to play at a high level across. Uh, unfortunately, that's not something this map struggles with, is high level terrains that can look across at everything. Uh, the stairs, they're a nice addition as well because otherwise you are very limited as to your exit points on here. Most of the other MDF terrain I have, there's built-in ladders and then there's additional ladders that you can add to it just to make it so that you don't have to traipse all the way back or have climbing plus or use full skill climbs, which are good because they do limit people's options, but this is nice because it also gives people options and you can use it quite strategically and place these stairs in areas where it might not be amazingly beneficial. Unlike what I've done here where I've tried to make the stairs go towards doors and all that sort of thing just to make it maybe easier for people to get to where they want to go, the objective room in the middle. So I do rate this expansion set, but I do think it works best if you're going to build a a cardboard terrain set because this is a little bit lower cost than quite a lot of the MDF terrain sets out there so it's a great way for you to build up a really good looking table and very practical table at relatively low cost. I do believe you may need to have more buildings, more of the core buildings that you see in the uh, two player battle sets and you may even benefit from having one of the other expansion sets on there. So Coldstrom had its own, which has an additional tower, an additional objective room. I mean, that's overkill having two of those, but you definitely need at least a few more buildings in play so that you can just layer up those pieces of terrain. 
I do like this expansion set. The objective room is quite nice and there's a very cheap way for you to get one of those if you're playing those missions. The gantry is a really nice touch. I am looking forward to putting something horrible up there and hiding it away, making it very difficult for it to attack. The sniper tower could be brutal with the, the right unit up there, especially if you don't pad out this terrain too much. But I think it's a very low cost way for you to get even more terrain. And if you're playing the smaller games, and especially if you're playing code one at those smaller points levels, which is what most people are probably gonna be using these sets for and what it's predominantly designed for, then it's huge amounts of value for what you get. Great uh, additional types of terrain that you wouldn't typically see or would cost you a lot to try and get from MDF, MDF or one of those other sources. Have you tried playing on these expansion sets before? Do you have a couple of them? Have you added them to other sets to try and pad them out? I'm really keen in the comments to hear how you found these sets, how you found the assembly, how you found the quality, how you find the playability of them. Uh, and let me know what you think in the comments below. I really do appreciate it. And I will be back soon with another video.